comment, like, subscribe. The bell keeps you notified. It helps the show thrive. Homophones, homographs, and homonyms are pretty well known in the field of language and linguistics. They are something we study from a pretty early age and are drilled into anyone learning a language. This foundation of Language Learning 101 is covered in so much detail for a pretty good reason. If you are learning a language, any language for that matter, as they appear in way more than just English, then they are an important element to understand and comprehend. They can also lead some pretty fun discussion. Hearing words get mixed up is always funny, so they can make language learning humorous and engaging. And I'm always up for making learning about language more fun, hence this whole shtick. The thing is however, there are way more than just homophones, homographs and homonyms in regards to words that help us understand words, for lack of a better term for these elements. If these are the three musketeers of linguistics, then there are like a dozen D'Artagnans. So I just want to highlight some of the other more forgotten words for words that are just as fun to talk about and as just as important as these three. Though maybe for completion sake, let's cover these three again shall we? It, it's not like I forgot what they mean or anything. To start with, we have homophones. A homophone is when two words sound the same, but are spelt differently and have different meanings. A great example of this is with the words hair and hair. While they might sound identical, they are spelt completely differently and have different meanings. Hair with an I relates to the stuff that grows on our bodies, and hair with an E is the name for a type of lagomorph. That's one of my favourite words by the way, I'm so happy I finally got to use it in a video. Though to make matters a tad more confusing for that example, a hair is in fact covered with hair. Both hair and hair are in the same word class too, being nouns. Homophones can extend into other different word classes however. Bear and bear might sound the same, but one is a noun for a unit of a beast that loves salmon and honey, and the other is an adjective, meaning something is exposed. Bear as in the grizzly or panda kind, bring us nicely onto homographs. Homographs are words that are spelt the same but have different meanings. So while bear could be a noun for these animals, it is also spelt the same way when we say something like bear left, meaning meaning to go left. It's also spelt the same for things like bear in mind or to bear fruit. It's a seriously versatile word. Bears themselves aren't as versatile unfortunately, or, or maybe they are. Bears have done all kinds of stuff in history. They've wrestled, danced, hosted talk shows. Maybe I'm underrating bears, or, or maybe I just need to stop talking about bears. Another example of a homograph is something like a letter. A letter could be an individual character in a word, or it can be a message written on a piece of paper. As seen, homographs can be more than just nouns too. A watch as in a little clock on your wrist is a noun, but to watch is a verb and means to observe something. Homonyms, however, don't seem to be quite as defined. I've actually found a few explanations as to what a homonym is. One source says that homonyms are both homophones and homographs, while others say they are more akin to just homographs. It's when two words are spelt the same and sound the same but have different meanings. Take bat as in the thing you use to hit balls and zombies with, and a bat as in the things that turn you into vampires. Though you could also argue that this is a homograph. Like I said, homonyms are a tad more confusing and a bit less defined. I personally feel that homonyms should be reserved for just nouns slash names, and that's because of the etymology of this word. The onym at the end of this word means name and we see in all kinds of words. The homo part of this name means same in Greek, so homonym means same name. This also helps explain the etymology of homograph and homophone too. Graph means written, so homograph means written the same, and phone means sound, so homophone means sounds the same. What's interesting and perhaps a bit ironic is that homo unto itself is actually a homograph too. While in Greek homo means same, in Latin homo means man, hence why we are homo sapiens. This also helps explain to us why we have homographs, homophones and homonyms too to an extent. Our modern language comes from a huge variety of roots and other languages, so when these predecessor languages have words that are spelt or sound the same but with different meanings, their offspring languages adopt both of them. And also if you're wondering, homosexual comes from the Greek homo, meaning same sexual. You might think it would come from the Latin homo, meaning man sexual, but of course anyone could be homosexual, not just men. Not entirely relevant to this video, but thought it was something worth clearing up. I feel these three get talked about the most because they all start with that homo prefix, making them somewhat easier to remember and link together. Plus we all really love doing things in groups of three it seems, though they're really just the tip of the iceberg in regards to words for words. And I feel that the fourth musketeer in all this are heteronyms. 
Heteronyms are words that are spelt the same but have different pronunciations and meanings. Examples include the likes of bass and bass, one being a type of fish and the other being a type of guitar. There's also read and read for the future and past tenses for enjoying a book, or even something like wind for blowing weather and wind meaning to turn something to activate it. Heteronyms are without doubt some of the most confusing elements of language and they aren't really talked about at all. There are some really subtle ones too that many of us, well myself anyway, probably don't even read as are heteronyms because we are so used to saying and spelling them. Take record as in the large black discs that play music and record as in the capture audio on a device. It's only a slight difference to them but it's undoubtedly there. Or console as in a machine of some sort and console meaning to care for someone who is upset. It had never really clicked for me that these words are spelt the same but have different meanings and different pronunciations. The confusion this can create however people just learning a language like English in example can be monumental to their learning which is something we talked about in our English accent marks video. Suffice to say, heteronyms can be really confusing, so why don't we talk about them more along with the other homo words? Well, I reckon it's partially because it doesn't start with homo, so it's a bit out of place with the rest of them. However, it's also argued that heteronyms are just a subcategory of homographs. I understand this as they're spelt the same like homographs, but homographs are often pronounced the same too, which makes reading them a lot less of a challenge. I really do think that heteronyms need a bit more of a spotlight on them. As for that name, well we have the onym suffix again meaning name, so perhaps heteronyms should only be used for names or nouns, and hetero is of Greek origins meaning different. This is also why we use the term heterosexual, meaning being exclusively attracted to people of a different sex. On top of this we have paronyms too. Paronyms are when words are spelled and pronounced somewhat similarly and also have somewhat similar meanings. A great example of this is the ever confusing effect and effect. To this day, I still have no idea what the difference is between these two. It can also be used for things like wise and wisdom too. The similarities between these words is reflected in the name of paronyms too. It uses the para prefix meaning alongside, like we see in the word parallel. This is because these words, although being different in spelling and pronunciation, do work alongside each other. Though I think some of the most interesting ones have to be capitonyms. These are when two identical words change meaning if it has a capital letter. I find these really fun though maybe that's just because I'm a big word nerd. Take March. Without a capital letter, it means to walk in a uniform military fashion. However, if we make that M a capital, then we have the third month of the year and it has nothing to do with stomping around. Another great one is Turkey the bird. When we give it a capital letter, it becomes Turkey the country. Though with that one, there is a bit of a link between the two, as we've discussed in years gone by. What's interesting about capital nims is that they can change pronunciation too. Take Polish. Without a capital letter, it's a verb verb meaning to make something shiny. However, capital P it becomes Polish, meaning something from the country of Poland. Of course, however, Polish can be used at the start of a sentence so it does receive a capital but is still pronounced as Polish. Take the sentence, Polish that bear for me please. We don't say Polish that bear for me please. This once again veers into heteronym territory. As I said, they are very important. And somehow we're back to bears. Let's move on. Oronyms are like homophones and homographs, but instead of being for single words, they're for entire phrases. Take mice eat and mice eat, and of course ice cream and ice cream. These aren't too confusing when read or said aloud, but they can often be pretty funny. There's a famous sketch by the two Ronnies that is all about wordplay and homographs, with the leading joker being about the oronym of four candles and four candles. It's very funny. British people go wild for it. Uh, four candles. Handles for forks. <laughs> and beyond this, we have a ton more onomin words, which are names for names. There's some pretty well known ones like acronym being a name made up of letters from a longer phrase, and we also have the likes of exonym and endonyms which are the bread and butter of this channel. There's mononyms too, for people who are more well known by just one name, like Seal or Pele. There's also more niche ones too, like my favourite hydronym, being the proper name for a body of water, e.g. Pacific or Thames. A necronym is the name for someone who has died. A great example of necronyms is with Chinese emperors who would often get new names in death. That's definitely something to dedicate a video to in the future that's for sure. There's all kinds of onims out there. Wikipedia has a great list of them where you can go check for yourself. Though by now I'm sure you get the point I'm trying to make. While they are incredibly important, there is way more out there in regards to language than just homophones, homographs and homonyms.
This video topic was suggested by Sebastian over on my Patreon. Every Wednesday, I put up a video request post over on my Patreon for my awesome patrons to leave video ideas on. I then pick one of those ideas to be turned into a video the following Wednesday. So if you have a great idea for a name explain video and wish to enjoy name explain videos ad free as well as get exclusive content, then why not support the channel on Patreon? It takes just $1 a month to help the channel in a huge way and gets you all of these amazing benefits. Visit patreon.com forward slash name explain or click the link down below. Name Explain depends on viewers like yourself supporting the channel financially on Patreon. So a huge thank you to everyone who does. Donating just $1 a month helps the channel amazingly and gets you bonuses including ad-free videos, exclusive content, and the power to request ideas to be made into actual Name Explain videos. $2 a month gets you all that, plus your name here with all these awesome people. Visit patreon.com forward slash Name Explain or click the link down below to find out how you too can support the channel. Thank you. Thanks for reaching the end of the video. Why not watch another and subscribe to keep up to date on all things Name Explain? You can find myself on Instagram where I'm Name Explain YT and join the Facebook group Friends of Name Explain to talk with myself and other name nerds. All of that will be linked down below. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and once again, thank you all so much.